All right. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to the High Schooler Interview Show. Um, Oliver, I'm really honored to have you here. Um, you know, I, I, uh, my friends freaked out when I told them that I was interviewing you. And uh, Project X is, is a great movie. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, and so I, I want to talk about that. But first, I want to talk about, ask you um, uh, about what you're, what you're doing now in your life. Uh, well, I, I'm acting in just a bunch of different stuff, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, like a bunch of TV and movies and just basically wherever I can get good work, I just I'll do it. So, <laughs> yeah. Where are you located, by the way? I'm in, uh, like, outside of Philadelphia. Nice. Okay, cool. And you're, what grade are you? I'm in 11th grade. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, yeah, no, I just, I mean, I'm just, uh, I mean, I'm an actor, so I just, you know, I don't know, it's just, you just go do auditions, and I get parts because of other, because of stuff I've done, and I just, just try to keep working. That's really where I'm at in my life right now, so. Yeah. yeah. How do you, um, like, approach the, the acting, like, process? How do I approach the acting process? Well, that's kind of a tricky question because it, it just depends on the part, really. I mean, um, I'd say the number one thing is just to be, you know, try to remember to have fun because it really is, like, no different than, you know, playing cops and robbers when you're a kid, you know? It's just, it's just, there's a camera and people are getting paid to do it and there's lines, but it's all the same. You really should have that same childlike kind of mentality where, you're, you know, when you're, you don't think about it, you just it's really just try to have fun. But as the roles get more, um, if there, if there, you know, if there's a lot to the role, it's, it's a hard role to play. There's a lot, you know, a lot of stuff I don't know about the, the, the time period where it takes place or the, uh, character's background if you're, you're playing a doctor like wh whatever it may be then you just do as much research as you can to like you know understand that that person i guess but then sometimes it's just you know i just try and go into a part of it's like something that's really similar to me i'll just be like oh I'll just i'm just gonna try and be loose and have fun so is it is it ever hard to like be in the moment you know and mm. be loose yeah, some yeah, a lot of times. I mean, that's probably the hardest thing. I mean, probably the hardest thing for anybody, really. You know, it's just like sometimes you know some bad's going on in your life. You know, someone's sick, or you're not feeling good personally, or you got broken up with your girlfriend, or whatever it may be. Then you got to go and like try and be like you know happy go lucky in a scene and funny or whatever it is, and you just don't feel that way. Yeah, it's, it can be tough. That's kind of the job, you know. You got to kind of be on when they need you to be on, or do cry or whatever it is when when they need you. So. Yeah. How do you? Um, I mean, is it is it kind of just like, like just having the, the dedication to just do it, you know, or <laughs> how do you, how do you do that? Uh. <coughs> excuse me. Um. Yes, dedication is definitely part of it. Uh, um, wanting to do a good job. I mean, sometimes it's out of fear. You know, you're like, I don't want to mess this up. And you're like, you know, go from there. Um, or just like, you know, being a fan of movies and stuff and going, well, I love movies just like anybody. You know, I'm sure you, you like you like movies. You, you, you know, you have your favorite movies or your favorite actors and you go wow I really like I'm the same way you know no different and I just when I, I want when I get an opportunity to be in something I'm oftentimes being like especially if it's good or I feel like it could be good I want to I want to do everything I can to be a part of that film history where it's like whoa I was in that movie and like you know you want to you want to we all want to be a part of, of that be one in some of those special movies or play a character that's really memorable or yeah, it's, 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 you know, I'm a fan just like anybody else. Yeah. Um, so how did, how did you, um, like, 
like can you tell me about growing up how you were a fan of movies and then how you decided to go you know become an actor um yeah i mm, i'm trying to think it's a long story uh why well, when i was about probably about your age you're 17 yeah when i was about 17 i i mean i was, I was always kind of like a funny kid or whatever i don't know always kind of uh, had a good sense of humor i'd say and uh i loved movies and stuff i never really thought about it because i grew up in ohio it wasn't like uh wasn't kind of a place where you would where you would where acting and comedy and all these things were it didn't feel like a possibility really but i i had read an article about adam sandler when i was about your age and uh i got I read, I read that he had done stand up and that he wasn't very good when he started. And I, and because all you ever see when you are, you know, when you're a fan is you see like the finished product. You see like the mega movie star or the person like doing the best thing that they've done. But you don't really see all the build up to that, how they got to where they got. So I just reading about Adam Sandler and realizing, oh, maybe I could do this. Like, you know, I, I don't, you don't have like, everyone's got to start somewhere no one starts and is all of a sudden great at whatever they do so I kind of from there uh um decided I wanted to do stand-up and I started doing open mic nights in my local uh town where I grew up in Ohio and I kind of toured around doing that stuff and I did that for a few years and then when I moved to I moved I dropped out of school after my first year I was like I, I kind of probably prematurely but just was like I really want to do this and so I moved out to LA and um, started doing stand-up there and did acting classes and stuff I really didn't actually think I wanted to be an actor at that point but I when I got out of here I was like I'll take some acting classes to see what it's like and I kind of fell more into I, I realized I was maybe a bit better at that and enjoyed doing that a little bit more and then I just got my first audition was Project X, kind of a long story, but I knew a, f a friend of mine used to be a child actor and uh, this guy, kind of a mentor of mine starting out, he got me the audition for the movie and uh, yeah. Yeah. So from there, just kind of, <laughs> it's a lot of luck. I mean, a lot of luck in the right place at the right time, you know, that, that really does go a lot. Of, you know, a lot of it is that, you know, just being at the right place at the right time and being open. And I was really uh, over, maybe co a little, I was pretty cocky as, as the, at that age. I just was very, um, I just didn't think, I just thought, why not me kind of thing. Mm. And so it, it, luckily it worked out. And, you know, obviously in, in time perspective changes and stuff. And, and you know, I, I look at it a little differently than I did when I was, 18 19 years old but i'm really grateful and obviously it's cool that people your age are still liking project x it's crazy to me as 10 years ago but yeah yeah um do you still do stand up no i i uh, that's one i don't want to say regret but just i stopped doing it after projects came out because i wasn't really good enough to have an act i just i still like i got projects when i was really still starting out i, I hadn't like it was like i mastered this craft or something and I was like all right I'm ready for the big screen now I just I really got lucky I was so young I would only been out in LA for nine months I was so young and still green so I kind of got nervous to do stand-up because I wasn't really polished enough I was still trying to figure out my act and stuff you know and and so I just kind of and I and I started working and I just slowly but surely just stopped doing it as much and then now it's been so long I, it's like I think about it sometimes and I have jokes and stuff but i i really to get on stage again it's it's it, it's uh it would be a whole different person on stage than i was when i just did then so yeah i mean to me it seems like like it's just so nerve-wracking to like think about yeah getting on even stage. when i i mean listen even when i was doing it a lot i mean it was i i have i have stage fright since i started i had stage fright i mean that was like you know, that was another thing that I actually, I, from, I, I think that's another reason I actually did it because Adam Sandler, when I re remember reading about him, he had really bad stage fright and still does to this day. 
and I that was a big thing for me. I wasn't like someone who was like, oh my gosh, I can I can get up on stage, no nerves whatsoever. No, I think a lot of it was like I used to get so nervous before my shows, especially when I was in high school. I'd go to these shows. I get I would be throwing up in the bathroom and like mm -hmm. I was I was a wreck. I, I yeah, it, I mean to me, being in front of people is I love it, but I'm also scared of it. It's a weird thing, but I really love attention but i also get really nervous in front of a lot of people so yeah because you would think that like some actors would be like like the type of people that could just go in front of a crowd with no you know with no apprehension but like i mean like uh, i've heard about a lot of actors that are like describe themselves as like introverts you know yeah no it's it's, it's a pretty common thing it's uh um yeah that that that, that I, I think there's a I think a lot of them are more in line with what I am it's like an introvert but also also you have the side of yourself that's extrovert it's like I, I can be both I can really be both but I think if I'm true to myself I'm probably more introverted but when I have like a you know everyone's got a character that they can you know whatever put on this character that you build up throughout your life growing up that allows you to go communicate or or be out in you know in public so like i have a persona that i can do that that's extroverted but i would say at my core is probably a pretty introverted more shy person i guess yeah so um so how old were you when you got project x <laughs> how old was i i had to think about it uh I moved out to LA when I was 19. So I was either, I can't, let's see, wait, 19. And then, I think I, I think I was 20. Mm -hmm. I think I was 20. Yeah, I, th I was 20. And then, yes, I was 20. When we shot that movie, I think I was 20. Yeah. And I turned 21 shortly after it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, you said that was, that was like nine months after you moved to LA. Yeah. Which is crazy. I mean, that, that like, yeah never happens like I, I i i it was not like i mean i looking at it now looking back on it now it's not like i was like the most talented it's not like it was jim carrey or something i gotta like oh, like nobody can stop me i'm gonna be this mega movie star i just think i just got i was really lucky that this, this project this time this you know just everything sort of lined up that it just felt it almost felt meant to be in some weird way but um yeah i mean i know people out who've been out here a long long time or trying to be active for a long time and never or it's just now take you know they don't get successful they're in their 30s or whatever or 40s even so um everybody's got a different path you know yeah yeah i mean like did you ever look around like because you know it's a uh like a you know major uh production and and like like i don't know were, were you were you shocked that that um that you were like the star of a of a major oh, that's a good question i mean i think yes obviously like i looked around and be like holy shit i think i had days like that but i also was so I was so driven. Like I, I was a weird kid in that way where I was like so driven. I don't even think I'm quite like that today. Uh, but at that age and that time, I was so driven to be successful or so driven to do a good job that I just remember all I really remember from that time period was being like, I, I was so, I was also cocky. I was like, I, I wouldn't necessarily say this to anybody, but I, felt like I deserve to be here this is like I'm and, I, and I'm gonna make this character really memorable or whatever or whatever it was it was gonna be I was gonna be the best at what I did so I, I was so focused and I'm friends with the director to this day and he just remember I mean he would talk about it like how I would come in when I came in for the auditions like for a kid that was obviously everyone that was auditioning was my age you know or young you know young kids and and <laughs> he always said that I was so like serious about it you know we're doing a comedy but I was so serious about it and that's really how I, I felt is I was just so focused on either getting the part and then once I got the part like just making this thing like I wanted to be so good in this you know 
and that was really like that was everything so i, I that's what i remember just being really focused yeah where do you think <laughs> that I, where do you think it came from focus mm, i don't know uh maybe just proving people wrong probably growing up like i think a lot of it was like a chip on the shoulder kind of like i you know a lot of people doubted that you know i move out to la that i would be able to you know it's just like anybody i'm sure if you told your family you're gonna do something that's not i don't know your family but i'm just saying a lot of people mm-hmm. in the midwest where i grew up that was not a that was a insane thing to tell your family you know like you're gonna be out go out, drop out of school and be go to la and be an actor it's like you're like oh god I, that's my kid <laughs> so so i get it on their perspective but at the time i was just like no like i i, I was just always been that I, I was always always that way though i was always like if i had something in my head that i wanted to do i was sort of unstoppable in that way so i just always wanted to do what i wanted to do and um whether that was like night you know i was probably being a bit naive and and probably you know i don't know dumb confidence or whatever but that's what the way it was and i just came out to la i was like i i have to do this i have to do this i have to i i, I felt like i had to be somewhere i had to get to this place and i don't know a little bit crazy but that's that's probably where it came from yeah do you think you would have done it had you not gotten project x like like would you have kept going until you until you got somewhere? Hard to say. I mean, I mean, listen, it's always weird to look like think like that because it's like I don't know. Every little thing affects your life, you know. It's like I don't know. You going you think about college and stuff right now? Yeah. Like you, you go to one school, like you have no mm-hmm. idea, but you go to one school, it, it, it it's gonna affect your life and like the outcome of your where your life goes could be majorly different depending on if you went to school in this city or that city or who your roommate was at this place and who your roommate was you know you just never know what little tiny life things will affect you know affect everything so I don't know I mean I don't know if I would have stuck it out or I mean or how long I'm sure I would have stuck it out a little bit I don't know if I would have had like what I had in me to be waiting tables right now be 30 years old not working or not getting anywhere I, I that would probably be tough on the i mean you uh, that would be hard because if the, on the rejection side of that we'd be like am i doing the right thing with my life or is this a sign that i'm not meant to be doing? i don't know it's it's really hard to say um but i really am appreciative of how it went because i learned a lot of valuable lessons not only about the industry and 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 not just entertainment industry but business as a whole like when you when you know when a lot of my friends were in college and stuff i'm in you know i'm in the movie industry like dealing with like rich powerful people and you get to learn so much stuff at such a young age that i just was like i was a sponge to it. i was like you know certain things i learned the harder way where you're like you know you learn stuff you weren't necessarily like uh you didn't want to learn that but like just a lot of stuff like that that i really am appreciative of of figuring all that stuff out at a young age and like then you're gonna realize now it's like my perspectives change on why i even want to do what i'm doing you know so yeah yeah um did you uh like do you think that that mentality of of uh being like of that like drive Mm. um do you like to what extent do you do you still feel that way? I think it comes and goes. I mean, like, um, it's a. Di- I I think it's just a different drive. Like I would say, it's like, I definitely. I don't think. I don't think that part of me ever will completely go away. I just think, like, you know, when I was that age, I thought, oh, well, like, I'm gonna be. You know, I wanted to be Adam Sandler. I wanted to be the, you know, I wanted to have all those things, you know, and have my star in my own movies and all this stuff. And just through my experiences and the cards that have been dealt to me and the opportunities that I've gotten, that that sort of career path just hasn't, you know, been quite the career that I've had 
I'm blessed to be working, but it hasn't been that career path that I met necessarily envisioned when I was 17 years old. I'm like, I'm going to be, or whenever I first started to think I would be an actor, it hasn't quite gone that way. But also at the same time, like, I, I don't think that if it had gone that way, like if it had, if I had after projects started in all these big comedies that I think I would have probably made poor choices. I think I wouldn't have been ready for that kind of fame and certain things. So in that way, I'm grateful. And just now my perspective is more like, like I like, I like doing the kind of character stuff and different smaller parts and, and working with cool directors and things like that, which is not the career I ever, envisioned when I first started out I kind of thought oh, I'm gonna make my own comedies and and be you know just like Seth Rogen or Adam Sandler and those guys that I kind of grew up on but now I'm not really thinking that way anymore just because it just doesn't feel like that's the path that I'm on so yeah yeah that's but. that's like I, yeah it's it's just um it's because I've I, you know I've heard people talk about that kind of thing and and like as a like a 17 year old looking looking forward like like I may, maybe it's like the things that that I want to do in my life like maybe actually aren't like what what would be good for me you know in the in the long run and I think I think that's that's important yeah you just gotta try things and like you know, and not, you shouldn't worry about that either. You know, it's like you'll, your path will kind of take it where it's supposed to be. So if you feel like you really want to do something right now, you should do it, you know, not think that, nah, well, maybe this isn't where I'm supposed to be. Like you only find that out through doing the stuff that, you, you know, you, you can't, you can't jump steps. You got to kind of figure it out and like, and just go on the journey. And I don't know, what do you want to do? What are you trying, what do you want? Or do you know what you want to do? Or do you have any, I mean, I've had like a lot of different things, but so I wanted to to be a screenwriter for okay. for a long time. And then yeah, just like something like writing creatively. And I've always loved That's movies. But That's now awesome. I'm like like I also um like write for my school newspaper and I'm like like well it's not like there are a lot of jobs in in like newspapers like there were in the past but like if I were a journalist too like it's not as creative but that's still really cool you know yeah yeah I mean can be very creative to be a journalist it depends on where yeah. you work and that's true that's awesome man well that's that's cool that's that's a I think it's an awesome profession it's if you, and if you work hard and you really want it like honestly like there's in my experience if you really want something it really can be accomplished but so yeah well like yeah so do you think that what do you mean by that that if you i think if you want something bad enough and you're willing to work for it and like you're willing to put yourself out there and like ask the right question i mean even even just reaching out to me and asking me to do an interview. I mean, there's a lot of people that just wouldn't even do something as simple as that. Yeah. You know, it's like, and that's why I responded to it. Cause like, I mean, I get a lot of people messaging me stuff all the time. 90% of the time, I'm like, you know, to sound like dumb or something. I'm just like, I'm not going to respond to this. And, but if I see someone doing something then I'm like, all right, well, it's cool. This kid's got a podcast. I don't know what, what it is for, but it, you seem like you're really trying to do something. And I think if you just have that mindset, you go, I want to learn and I want to, you know, um, I'm interested and curious about this thing, whether that be, you know, acting for me or writing for you or whatever, you just put the time in, you put the curiosity in and you work hard it may not be overnight. It may not, you may not have a situation like I did where it's like, Oh, like, wow, I just moved out to LA and all of a sudden someone gives you the keys to the Ferrari or something. It's like, that has its own challenges anyways, to have that happen, but it might be 10 years down the road, but if you just really love what you do and you're willing to work for it, I think you, anyone can do. Yeah. I think you can do anything. Hard work is more valuable than, than being ta overly talented. I mean, I know tons of talented people who are I, that, that really haven't had the careers that they they should have it's just because they really weren't working hard or they didn't 
put themselves out there and they didn't have, you know, it's, you got to put yourself out there and really want it, but it can be done. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, that's, yeah, it's great to know. Yeah. Um, just to, uh, to pivot a little bit, I wanted to ask you about, um, uh, playing Jewish characters in movies. <laughs> um, and so like, like I, I, I heard, um, I watched this podcast of, um, John Cho talking about like how he he doesn't he doesn't do like a like an accent like if and if some you know he's not going to do like a stereotypical Chinese accent because he just doesn't want to do that yeah and like he doesn't want to have even if it's done in a in like a in a in a good way or like a funny way he doesn't want to have any like racist jokes in, in movies that he does and and so I wanted to to know like what you think about that. Obviously, in Project X, the character you play is Jewish, and and there's some jokes about that. And like I, I'm Jewish, and I think that they're all like I love those jokes. So I, I just wanted to know what yeah. you think. I'm the same way. I mean, I I don't know that I can't speak for anybody else, and I don't know that. Um, I don't know that the, yeah, maybe it's different for someone like of, of uh, you know, if, if, if he, I don't even know, it's John Cho Chinese, I'm not even sure, but it, 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 maybe it's different for him and, and his plight and whatever. But as a Jew, like, I've always, I've always really loved Jewish humor and stuff. And like, I'm not, I like, I enjoy playing a Jew. It's not like I'm, it's not like a care. There is, though, it's not a caricature of a Jew, but I do enjoy the, old Jewish humor and there's like a there's a culture behind it and and I've I've enjoyed playing those roles I don't think they're I don't think I've ever done anything where it's like I've made a Jewish made the Jewish people look bad or something <laughs> I hope not um I've never thought about it like that um yeah I've always enjoyed playing Jewish characters or you know using that old like old-timey Jewish jokes and things like that and you know throwing a little yiddish in there or just there's a whole culture behind being jewish that's that's funny i'm not even religious myself but just the the culture behind it i grew up in that and i and my grandparents and all that stuff and it carried over to me and i think it has yeah i do enjoy playing those characters um uh so i've never felt that personally but i could understand how you know someone who's asian or someone who's black or whatever would it's a bit different i think it's a different i think it's a different thing because they've been so stereotyped poorly as jews have been stereotyped almost in a more by uh, by jews because the jews are been, been the ones making it and they've been stereotyped in a more positive manner i think or maybe, maybe i'm wrong i don't know i don't know i'm not I the mean, guy to ask for that yeah i think that's like that's what that's what i i agree with that um and like like yeah I'm, I'm not religious either but like i love the just like you know the the whole culture and like those jokes yeah 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 they're uh for me that it's like it kind of just reminds me of fam my family and stuff so mm. it's kind of how I, I grew up on those jokes it's like part of my part of my sense of humor but um i also don't but i also at the same time don't love being like one dimensionally like I would if I did even when I stand up just to be like constantly like Jewish jokes Jewish jokes Jewish jokes I've never been a big fan of that because even the um you know even I don't really love it when like a, a comedian who's who's of any descent con you know it's a, it can be a crutch if you're just constantly mm -hmm. doing jokes that is a specific to your culture or or your background because I just think it's like not everyone can relate to that you know but it's a little thing yeah um uh how how do, how have you like progressed as an actor like do you ever do you ever watch um like things that you did at the beginning and think like like you know i could do that better now or mm. 
how do you think you've gotten better? Well, I try not to say I don't like watching myself. So that's, that's just, yeah. every time I do, I, I just get sick about it. Um, so I don't, I just I try not to like judge it because this funny thing is like some, I could watch, I could watch something and go, that's fucking terrible. Oh, sorry. Am I allowed to cuss on this? I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, I said, that's terrible. And then, and then someone else could be like, message me and go that what you did in that thing is so amazing and i'm like well i don't know then i i don't know everyone's got their own opinion i can't really see myself i can't judge myself in a in a real genuine way all i can really go off is off of is how i felt doing it that i feel like i was present and i was there and you know i i honestly the best thing the best sort of not advice but just kind of thing i observed from an actor that I worked with who's a really great actor was just the way in which he, um, sorry, I hit my mouth. Um, just the way he uh, was able to let go and go like, and, you know, he did a take and, it, and, it, and then he moved on. It wasn't like he, hmm. a lot of times uh, young actors, especially, they always, they're like always holding on to the last take and going, oh, I can do this better. Or I want to try, you know, it's like you never satisfied, but really you should just be, letting it go and kind of flowing freely through it. It's like, all right, whatever happens with that, you know, even if you mess up a line, like just keep going and just don't let that affect you. Like I'll, when I was young, I would be like, I'd mess up a line early on or stumble over something or it didn't go exactly how I had planned it in my head. And then I'd be like the rest of that scene, I'd be thinking about how I messed it up. And that's a terrible thing to do as an actor. It's really not, that's like kills the whole performance. So, things like that where i i I, i'm at least i try to get better uh, about that stuff where it's like i just don't let let it i just don't really uh hold it so tightly i kind of let it go a little bit and um i think as i've gotten older i've gotten better at doing that and then also just life experience i mean listen like you know i'm 32 years old means i'm 15 years older than you so it's like in 15 years, it's going to be a lot of shit that's going to happen in your life. Yeah. You know, you're going to go to college, you're going to get girlfriends, you're going to get broken up with girlfriends, all this stuff. You're going to have jobs, you're going to you get whatever. You're going to have all kinds of ups and downs in your life. You know, you're probably going to move, you're going to make money, you're going to all these things are going to happen in your life. And you're going to, it's going to affect the person that you are, you know, and, uh, so th- those, I think having more life experience has, well, has affected my performances for sure. And also at the same time, some of the stuff I did when I was first starting out in Project X, one of the best gifts I had was just not really knowing any better. So I was, I was so confident and that, that comes across like, I don't, I could probably do that character different now, but I don't know that it would actually be any better. Maybe it'd be worse. Because where I was in my life, it really like I was the character in some ways, you know, the, the movie, the character mirrored what I was going through with my life. You know, that character was Project X was so arrogant and confident and such an asshole. But I was so arrogant and confident in my own life. So I was like, I, I am starring in a movie and I was right and everybody else was wrong. And like, fuck all these people. And and like, I'm I'm the man <laughs> like and that that kind of that kind of mentality kind of. I think lended lended itself to kind of creating a, a character. The, the character feels real when I when I see clips of it now. I'm like, I don't even know that kid. When I watch project, when I see clips of projects, I'm like, oh my god, I was I'm like, what was I? I was crazy in that movie. And I'm like, I don't even know who that is. So yeah. And so, do you think it's, um, like, like so that was you were playing a character that was a lot like you um and then not really i mean huh. it's funny and in, in so i think a lot like it was, i was playing a character who i was trying to be maybe. Huh. like i don't know i would not i was not a party i was not like no i was not a party i was actually probably the opposite you know, i was more of a more of a i was more of a shy kind of you know more not shy but just more like more of the i was more of the best friend character i was more of the thomas character in that movie in real life i was a mix i was a mix you know i I would not have been going to a friend's house throwing parties like that and doing like 
and and that I just had I, I, there was an aspect of me that I I knew how to pull out that character because when I first auditioned for that movie I actually auditioned for the main for the main character mm-hmm. and when they told me they want to see me for the other role I knew exactly who that character was whether it was exactly me or not and I think as we made it I just became more and more like that character the making of the movie just off I would just the way that they had me dressed and like and being so young it's not like I was like this fully realized human being who knew himself I was like trying to figure out okay who am I what's my thing you know what what am I gonna do I was I was in the process of trying to figure all that stuff out and so when they cast me as this thing and I started doing it and everyone thought it was funny and great I was just like okay this must be me and I was like I gotta do this and I just bought into it a little bit so it was a weird thing that happened with that movie but yeah I mean so it's like you became the character yeah in some way for 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 a brief mm. period of time I think I quickly realized that after that I was like I don't want to be this guy yeah <laughs> um do you try like to a lesser extent to try to do that with your roles now of becoming you know not in your own life but like when you're acting oh I guess obviously you want to be the character when you're acting but uh no I I think I have a much better grounding um now I I have a much better footing I suppose is uh like I don't know I don't try to become that character but I also you know it goes back to like I think it's like my natural instinct to you know I still do even when I'm at my house I do I'm always doing characters and find a weird hat and i'll put it on and i just it's like i've been doing this since i was a little kid you know just doing characters and stuff and and i think that's kind of where i would like to be heading even more so now it's and i've got a little bit of that opportunity uh to play i love kind of really distinct interesting characters and like you know and i don't know where i'm going with this (laughs) but yeah what were you what you asked me where i was going what was the question of about how you like do you try to be oh do i become those characters yeah i think i become them briefly when i put when i put on outfits like if i put on like a different outfit if Mm -hmm. i even put on a suit i can even go back to years before i even acted when i would put on a suit and go to like let's say i went to like temple with my family or something i would put on a suit and i i would become i would like always like become like a different guy because like, I was not a suit person or whatever how I would like it would make me like feel like an like an old lawyer or something I would always do those characters to my family and things like that so uh I, when I'm doing a character and I put on the outfit and I just start doing the thing and I find the voice it's like yeah I, I do find myself becoming that person but I don't think I would ever become that person for, for I go once I go home I kind of try to shut it down you know yeah but then was just it was that was just that movie projects was just a whole different thing it was just so new and everything was so was just time it's all timing this came at an interesting time in my life so yeah well i wanted to ask like what how did you react when it like not only were you in uh uh a big movie like it was really successful in the box office and and i guess like still you know it's on netflix how did you react to that uh how did i react to it? Uh, at the time i mean i was so consumed with like i wanted to see how it would do for my career and i, I was like what am i gonna do next and um and I remember like seeing it for the first time on a screen and I was like kind of horrified actually. Cause I, I mm. you know, I, I, in my head, you know, I was going to be awesome. And then I watched him like, wait, the f- what did I just do? Like, what is this character screaming and yelling the whole time? Like, what is this? And mm-hmm. so I just kind of like, I think I, that was also my first experience with like, Oh, I don't like watching myself. This is not good. You know, I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. Um, uh, so I don't remember what I really like. I, I think I was like kind of enamored with the idea that like, Oh my God, people know me. This is crazy. Like I'd be like, you know, walking, I remember seeing the movie and then after the movie, like we saw it before it even came out, you know, the, you know, an early screening and I would, people would come up to me and I'd be like, this is crazy. That was my first experience. I never, you know, you only like, 
I've only, I've been on the other side of that, you know, that's it. I've never been that guy. So it was kind of, that was kind of crazy. And, but then as time's gone on and I've worked more and more and just worked also like just more than anything, just worked with a lot of people that I like admired and stuff. And I'm like, ah, they're all just, they're all people. And it doesn't, now it's like, it doesn't even like, it doesn't even really affect me to see that I'm going to be in something or like, it's only cool if I'm really excited about the movie. So I'm like, well, this is going to be a good movie. I'm really excited about it, but it doesn't really like, uh, the allure of fame and stuff like that. That's, that's kind of gone for me mm-hmm. in a good way. I don't really, that's yeah. not really what should be driving you. You know, yeah. being famous is not the driving force for me anymore. Yeah. It may have been, when I was that age though. So mm-hmm. um, how do you think you can uh, like at, at like, like that age um uh i guess like like the question i was going to ask would be what piece of advice would you give to yourself when you were like 17 or let's say uh 19 or 20 when project x came out like uh i guess like when you're young you know you have a tendency to care about stuff like fame and and so yeah maybe i'd say don't be so hard on yourself and um at the same time uh try everything like try more stuff and be and have fun like i think i got so caught up in like you know trying to be something or do something well or whatever that it's just for for a long time i was just didn't even remember to have fun doing it. <laughs> you know it's like yeah i still gotta remind i still remind myself of that sometimes get nervous and i'm like wait just have fun this is like i'm playing here this is not rocket science here so yeah yeah um and then you mentioned him earlier um but could you tell me a little bit about how um sean weiss uh helped you as when you were first getting into the business uh so yeah so sean uh sean was I mean, that's a long, long story, and it's like kind of he- a lot of heaviness in there, too. But uh, Sean and I met doing stand up. Uh, I actually think I like, may have messed with him when I was on stage. I didn't even know it was him. I think I made like a joke about him or something. And because I thought he looked like Goldberg, the goalie, which I knew from growing up, and I didn't have anyone I knew in the industry really. So, uh, and then we kind of, I saw him at, I saw him at a comedy club and, you know, the open mic comedy scene is very small. And so I saw him there and I, and we started talking and we kind of just befriended each other. And he sort of, he was older than, he was probably like 30 at the time. And I was 19 uh, or eight, 19 at the time or something. So I, he kind of became like a mentor to me and was like kind of the, one of the first people, there's two people I really remember. One was a teacher in acting class who really, believed in me and like I had no idea that I could even act and then the other was Sean who was the first person to be like you know you're you could you're like there's something about you like he didn't think I was like a traditional stand-up necessarily and I was so green but like there was something I was experimenting on stage and there was something about what I was doing that he really thought was like he saw something in me and the fact that he had been around and I thought he was super talented you know obviously had some life choices and things that happened to him uh that that really like you know family stuff and 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 drugs and alcohol like that really kind of derailed his career a little bit but he was super um he was so talented he still is i'm sure like he's so talented so funny and he and it was the first person i was like i I trusted his opinion and so he gave me a lot of confidence and advice and we wrote jokes together and we just kind of be we were, I hung out with him every single day, basically. And he um, was really kind enough to help me get this audition. And he contacted Judd Apatow for me, who he had worked with. And I don't even know why to this day he really did it. And all this, because I've never done, I've, I've never done anything for anyone else like he's done for me. So maybe one day I will, but 
um, that was, yeah, that was really like, he, he really, without him, I would never have booked that part. No way. I would have got the audition. So. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's cool. How you said like him and, and the acting teacher, like, like saw something in you and like, um, you know, was it, were you, I don't, yeah, I, I guess that's just, that's, it's a cool thing um, that, that they like saw potential in you. Yeah. I mean, that, that's kind of, uh, um, I think, I think whatever you do, and I don't think this has anything to do with like, whether you want to be an actor, writer, or in the entertainment industry at all, like you could be a lawyer, you could be a doctor, whatever. I think you need like people along the way to give you some sort of confidence that what you're doing is is you're on the right path because you know those people are so beneficial and i'm like always quick to do to say that you know if i see some if i i, I do do that with people because i i do really enjoy young people and like people who are i, I love seeing people who are really trying to do something because it's you know i'm sure you see at your high school it's like most people and most people don't most young kids don't really care about anything they're just like i want to go to college get drunk and yeah. get girls or whatever and so when I see someone who actually has like a passion or whether it's music or something that just isn't necessarily conventional, I'm really quick to like, you know, say, I'll keep doing it or try this or, you know, give them some advice because it means a ton when you're that age. And when, when you, if, if someone gives you some advice along the way that helps you, it's amazing. It really is everything. I, I, I probably would give up if it wasn't for those people giving, you know, those couple of people you know so yeah. well i'll say it's it means a lot for you to be on here and oh man no worry of course yeah i mean you know responding uh responding to me and then giving me the sorry time I missed, sorry i missed the last one. <laughs> oh no, no. 